Um, my name is Casey, also known as Ramfox on the internet, um, and I work at number zero. I work with these lovely people. Some of them are in the room today. And we are building IRO. IRO is efficient IPFS that can scale up to the cloud and down to a mobile device. And I'm going to talk to you about IRO Cloud and also some guiding principles we had while building it that we feel um, really aided in our development. So the first guiding principle is we want to have the flexibility of an architecture that allows us to use different approaches for different platforms. They have different needs. Let's figure out how to address those separately. And the second is you are what you measure. We are a very measurement focused organization that has paid off immediately every time there's been a new measurement. Um, I can vouch for this one. And I'll, I'll give you a couple examples of, of how that's really helped us. So um, the idea for IRO started, uh, B5 and I flew out to Berlin to uh, meet Dig in person the for the first time. We knew we had a lot of values in common, like our dedication to distributed software and also um, ideas on how we wanted to run a company. For example, you are what you measure. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we had something new to bring to the table. And uh, one morning, in a haze of like coffee and like intense discussion, sort of like how I feel like we're going to get uh, at this conference, uh, Dig drew us this lovely picture. And uh, in case that's not clear, uh, we did some design magic uh, to make it look like this. So IRO is not just a single binary. IRO is uh, separated out into areas of concern, all running as their own binary, speaking over our PC. What does this give us? It gives us composability. If you um, need something special to be happening here, you can use our RPC language or you know, be able to talk to our RPC connections and compose this how you want or put things in between it. You can do things like uh, things that you would expect to scale independently can now scale independently. Uh, so let's say you have a huge uh, need for storing a ton of data. You can expand out the data store without having to have a separate PDP node for each thing. Um, so, or you can Let's say you just need to add some uh, networking. You can just pull out the P2P node and use that on its own. The last bit I'm gonna get to is the gateway. So we have our, our the gateway was our first like big push, our first initial offering, because we wanted to make sure that we, again, you are what you measure. We needed something that could be compared to the th different things that are out there in the ecosystem already, make sure that we are, you know, keeping up. Um, so that, uh, so yeah, so that was our, our last piece that we felt like was important to uh, build. Let's talk about these pieces a little bit more in depth. The data store is essentially an object store. It's an opinionated, immutable key value store. The underlying database we're using is RocksDB, written by Facebook, boo, boo, big tech, but it's working for us because we know that it can scale up to a data center and down to a mobile device. Our plans for scaling this in the future, if you need to add more data, add a box. It is now a shard in the database. Um, when fetching, you can use a hashing function to and the number of shards that we know are in the database to figure out where your data should live or where it needs to be pulled from. We're talking about using weighted rendezvous hashing. If you guys want to talk about those special properties, we can talk about it. Uh, you can ask a question about it. I'll answer it later. Um, our P2P node is using RustLib P2P. I got to give a lot of credit to the RustLib P2P folks. It was straightforward to implement, and it is just working for us, which that's what you want in your software. Um, and we know that as they, they have things along their roadmap that um, will improve Rustlib P2P, and we can just draft off that. We're very excited. Um, so for scaling the P2P node, we do have a lot of room to grow here before we, this is like a crazy concern. I've seen proof of um, a Rustlib P2P node 
handling 20K connections with under five gigs of memory. That's pretty good. Um, and we know that the simplest way to scale this will to just be to add more nodes, but there are obviously many other arrangements and needs that people will want. And, um, but the first, the first step, hey, you need, you need more stuff, you need more connections, add another node. It can talk to the same database because everything is uh, speaking over an RPC connection. Speaking of RPC, it was important for us to use something that was widely established, so it would be easy, easy for other folks to um, you know, add their own services on top. We we're using Tonic, the gRPC REST implementation. It's fast, it's reliable, comes with load balancing, health checks. Um, and then finally, our gateway. So we've been using the gateway, like I said, to uh, kind of determine if we're playing in the right ballpark. Uh, because you are what you measure. And this next section, I'm going to basically be singing the praises of one of our other team members who couldn't be here tonight. His, um, his name is Asmir, uh, and he's really been leading the charge on this. He's, his role is dedicated to um, deploying and measuring our software. These metrics that he's been coming out with, they're immediately useful. It allows us to pinpoint the slow parts of our code and it really, and I think this is the important part, it gives us guidance on where we need to spend our time because we know we have evidence that, hey, this part of our code is slow, so it is worth spending the time fixing it. Asmir built the gateway checker. Um, it is a measuring stick to rank ourselves. Uh, it is not like, oh, we shaved two seconds off of our time on the gateway. Like That's not the thing it's measuring. It's measuring, hey, are we in the right ballpark? It's comparing, um, it runs these tests for a well-known CID, does it resolve and how quickly? For a set of new CIDs, does it resolve how quickly? Does it cache well on repeated checks? And we are running these tests and um, here's like a little bit of an overwhelming uh, view of what the gateway checker actually looks like. Um, we are testing against Cloudflare, DWeb, IPFS, and Infura. The other boxes are like our different experiment boxes. Um, for example, this is our uh, US box, EU box. Dig has like a magic box in <laughs> his apartment that has a little bit of uh, better hardware. And then these are, um, uh, have load balancers in front of them. This one's just like, hey, let's see what happens if we like pay Amazon a little more for some juice and see if it actually makes a difference. So there are a bunch of experiments that we're running. And I got to tell you, the first time that we saw this gateway checker, it did not look like this. We were uh, like two orders of magnitude uh, out of the ballpark. Where our errors were way higher than everybody else's. Um, our timeouts were two minutes long, which is a full minute longer than everyone else's, which made for some hilarious duration numbers. Um, that was a great fix. We got 100% improvement just by changing one stat. Um, and we were just a slower implementation. And the way that we were able to um, focus on, hey, and, and the way we were able to quickly iterate on that and focus on, hey, what needs to be checked is Iro has universal trace IDs. So the trace IDs, follow the requests from the beginning to end, even over the RPC connections. And this is all common tooling. We're using REST tracing module, OpenTelemetry, Grafana. If you run your own IRO cloud service, you can pull all these things um, in and make your own lovely you know, chart of your own. So this is what a trace looks like. I want to point out this pretty you know, 142 microseconds. The slowness I was talking about before, um, that was our bit swap implementation. And this tiny little line was a large yellow line that was two minutes of timeout. And as Brendan said the first time we saw these traces, hey, this is so cool. We have so we can learn from this so much. It's literally a giant yellow line saying, drop everything and just work on bit swap. And we did. Literally a week later, we had four PRs merge that were just about fixing BitSwap. And uh, that's our, our new time. So uh, 
those are just some examples of how using metrics has had an immediate impact on our organization. Instead of being two orders of magnitude out of the ballpark, we are now, you know, on our best days, the fastest and on any given day in the top three. And we did that by following these different approaches. Um, sorry, these, uh, these two different uh, guiding principles. Use different approaches for different platforms and you are what you measure. AeroCloud is coming Q4 2022. Uh, if you want to check us out before then, it's all open source. Come check out our, Git, uh, our GitHub. You know, type out that if you want to join our Discord or wait till these, <laughs> these slides get somewhere you can click. If you want to just check out our gateway, um, those are, those are, that's the address. Um, so we support IPNS and IPFS. And yeah, does anyone have any questions? Again, I'm Casey. <laughs> you don't need to talk. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So we're, we haven't been scaling, we haven't had the need yet to scale up the P2P nodes. Um, they would be separate. There's a different arrangements and plans we have. Dig could probably speak to this a little better if you would like. Yeah, so the identity story there is hard. Yeah. Um, the first scaling that we want is a single identity across multiple you know, so basically you just share a fight key. Um, because you, that, that's the point where you're like, well, I have this one identity, but if I need it to have 500 million connections, so I'm going to run out of space on this one box, right? The more complex solution where you want to have multiple identities in the same kind of arrangement, um, I would love to support that eventually, but I've actually need to talk to people. So if you have that need, please come talk to me because I actually don't know in what scenarios you that really, really is where you need it. Um, because at the end of the day, that identity doesn't actually matter. Because the identity, you have different keys for IPNS, so you, you actually don't care about the core identity. It's just, it's just the key, right? So it can be HTTPS or whatever, but it's not, not, that, not that important at the end of the day. Uh, so we're really curious if there's actually a need for having many identities in the same box. Um, if so, we can do it, but if, if we could theoretically do it, I have, I have an idea of it, but it's, it means you have to basically run an independent P2P you node know, per identity, um, at least, because all the P2P protocols are, they're conceptually, they can only understand one identity. And so you have, they, there is no like, oh, I'm, I'm two different people from Apple. You always the same identity. And so that would get really messy, and so you know, having to just be different. And so can I follow up on that? So when you say scaling up, is it scaling across multiple machines or multiple processes on one machine, or is it like threads? It would multiple machines. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Well, you, you could. Single processes up vertically yeah. on the same machine, right? So there is no need to like, have more than one peer to process on a single machine. The point is that you can now have the things on two machines. <coughs> So if you have many machines with many P2P processes, they all share the same identity. How do they advertise themselves on the machine? Do they use the public IP of the machine that processes them? Does it get conflicts? You can have multiple. I mean, you already have like multiple addresses that you can dial that way. So that, that's that's effectively down to the question of the duration of the people deploying it. You can. The easiest one is put a load balance in front of it and you know you run button or whatever. Um, we have some thoughts of implementing custom load balancer, which actually the problem is standard load balance will not understand the PD traffic, so you can't actually do nice things by doing the looking at the traffic and you give once things like stick session in there. Um, but um, yeah for for now we, we haven't hit that limit yet. <laughs> but it's definitely Working. So are you using the Amazon primitives for like your load balancers yeah. and stuff here? No. No. That, are, 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 we, are we using? Uh, I think it's just there. He's, is it NGINX? It's just NGINX in front of, yeah. Well, I, I don't, I don't know what load balancer. 
Maybe we have like a no, we have a load balancer. Right? We do have a load balancer in front of them. But yeah, no, we, we use this uh, proxy. Asmir is going to be joining. Sorry, Asmir is going to be joining the Slack, and I can connect you guys if you yeah, want the connection. Yeah. yeah. No, we try. We try to not depend on. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How the oh. specific services back from the delivery standpoint? So can you, you know, take one thing offline while keeping the service going? Yeah. Specifically like in the case of the Blue Box DB, there's some other kind of connections. Uh, yeah, you can take one of the services online. It won't affect. Obviously, if you ask for something from the store, you take the store down, you're not going to get anything. Um, but it won't affect the like uptime of the other. Uh, yeah, services. I guess we're getting that, like, say, you know, uptime for maintenance. So, yeah, we've all been there. Mm -hmm. This is, hey, you gotta update your database, or else we're gonna do it for you. You know, can you guys avoid stuff like that with rocks, or is, I don't know, you're talking about, like, you're talking about like, doing a migration type thing and actually doing a deployment with the green switch. Yeah, I think we, and we're on the mind that that's specific to your office department. Sure, so, I'm just more curious if, like, Rocks or you know, iron in general is kind of meant to support that type mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it conceptually it is. Um, right now we're in the lucky position we, we, have, we haven't had to do my question yet. That will change. It's, it's it's not, not, not yeah. worried about that, that will change. Um, but the idea is that the scalability layer already basically solves that in the sense as soon as we have that, we can say. Um, I need to take this in the offline and uh, remove it from the cluster, which means that um, the data quickly assigned to the start, you can move automatically off that actually, and then you just do it sort of, um, which, is what, which is when you want to move on to from the remove node type of way. There's some nice things you can do with starting functions where you just yeah, can move the instance of the data onto another one. Uh, independently, just keep it running, and then take your original offline and just say, this new box is now at this exact moment, and this is using that compare that the underlying box has changed, and it's just cost off the moment. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm coming Q4, what does it mean? Like, is that like version one? Is that like a service I can sign up for? Like, what? It means like an official release with beautiful documentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can download it and run it yourself. You'll have good docs to show. We'll have battle tested it. All the nice stuff. Basically, what most people would call one Yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Twenty twenty three. Yeah, twenty twenty three is Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Yeah. Um I think that's all my time, right? Okay, cool. Thank you guys.